Hello there, welcome back to the Agostino Zynga show with I, your host Agostino Zynga and this is episode number 545, that's 545 of the Agostino Zynga show, hope you're doing well wherever this show may meet you or whatever has found you or wherever you might be as you're listening to this said show, if it's your first time to get the show via YouTube you know what to do, smash like it, subscribe, leave a comment down below, all that good stuff if you listen to the podcast app, a five star review will help the show grow and illustrate that many many people listen to it so do it on the podcast app or via spotify either platform especially if it's on your iphone app or android i would greatly appreciate that yeah is that slow enough for some people because people have been complaining i'm speaking too fast which are it's impossible to change that sort of stuff you know it's like asking me to cut off my hair it's just not gonna happen but anyway any help on that regard we much appreciate with the ratings and with the reviews please leave me one and if you want to support the show via patreon you're more than welcome to there's a link in the description of the show patreon you get one bonus episode per week there's another one coming out at the end of this week for the people on patreon because it comes a bit late so you get all the bonus episodes only available via patreon so make sure you jump on there don't delay i've already got one out at the moment it's a review of the national documentary so if you're into that kind of stuff then definitely check out the patreon at patreon.com for just agostino it's only one dollar the equivalent of one pound first tier to get involved bonus access to all the bonus shows as well as many many other benefits that are going to be coming very soon that i aim to announce so jump on there don't delay get involved today but yeah we're back in the sector hope you are well wherever you may be i'm recording a quick show before i watch the ufc so i thought why not use this time wisely to record some more content because you know what man's a content machine no actually i just enjoy doing this and it's not about content really people that say that sort of stuff always annoy me and it content making machines like do you actually enjoy what you're doing or are you just doing it because you know you feel as if this is how you're gonna hustle your way out of your whatever um you're gonna hustle your way out of a really bad spot i don't think you know that's the way to go because you know more likely than not you're gonna hit a wall when you hit a wall there's no coming back from that so it's better you do these things when you actually enjoy them or do something that you actually enjoy so that when you do hit a wall your ease it's kind of um you don't have to try so hard to kind of get back on your feet again which inevitably does happen in terms of hitting a wall you know happens to all of us whether it's you eating the same thing or you know getting bored of certain people or certain places it happens all the time so pick yourself up dust yourself off and try again boom but yeah we're back in the sector what have i been doing watch united play last minute winner against west ham over the moon about it especially because you know martial came on with the last 10 minutes to go was booed by a section of our fan base who believed that he wanted to leave and didn't want to play like you know united man it's a mess and it's a drama um situation i'm not really gonna put too much blame on ralph ragnick because he only just got there I think it might have been a miscommunication between Anthony Marshall's camp and maybe Ralph Ragnick and maybe his coaches. I don't think they had a direct conversation. I think it might have come through intermediaries that, oh, Marshall says that if he's not going to play, then he doesn't want to travel the squad. And maybe Ralph interpreted that he doesn't want to play. I'm not too sure. But either way, it didn't come out great. I think Ralph also was maybe feeling the pressure. He didn't need to say that to the press. I think he basically put um unwanted amount of attention and scrutiny on martial and the squad in general and the disharmony it wasn't necessarily needed i think already some certain section of united fans have already made their mind up about martial which is they fair to do because you know he's been in the cup for seven or so years if people are not sold on him and think he's not the answer then fair enough let him go but I don't think the manager coming out and saying that you don't want to play football is going to help things. You know what I mean? It's not going to be the most helpful situation to go through. So that wasn't something that I was a fan of. But again, you know, managers do what managers do. And in the end, he ended up coming out to help us because in the end it worked out because, you know, if Marshall does want to leave, he will need to play anyway because he hasn't played in a long time. So the club's basically buying him will be buying him just off whatever memory they have of him in his best spell but there's nothing like a little bit of recency bias for you to kind of get yourself in a shop window and maybe kind of widen your options of club so if he plays well for us ironically and gives us an opportunity to maybe cement our top four position he will never to be get a pretty decent club um that he could maybe be happy to go play for because from what i've heard and from what i've been reading in between the lines it sounds like he's obviously a bit disillusioned with life at united and more so about his family i think his missus you know wants to basically go somewhere warmer which is you know understandable living in manchester all that time especially for somebody as young as him you know being from france 
you know, it's unlikely that players, especially foreign players, are ever going to come to Man United and want to, you know, um, retire there, you know, entirely, especially people that come from maybe sunnier climates or cultures maybe where they basically prioritise family life more so than footballing achievements because a lot of footballers are like that actually. People don't really notice that but there are a lot of footballers who, you know, just play football, not play football as a job but they don't they don't just go to places because they pay the most. Yeah, you know I mean they're not gonna go to Dubai, they're not gonna go to China because they pay the most money or sorry the Middle East um or places or the Chinese League because they pay the most money because they don't want to live there. Yeah you know I mean nothing about that culture or about that way of life it basically um pulls them in terms of kind of relocating their entire family. Because you also have to imagine most footballers move around like rappers. They take an entire cohort of people with them. It's not just them on their own. It's definitely the mum. It's the it's the maybe the dad if they're around. It's the wife. It's the kids. It's the wife's assistants or friends. It's your little crew of people that you hang around with. Like you're taking a whole bunch of people with you, especially if you don't want to be bored and you don't want to hang around with randoms. You know what I mean? Because you're a celebrity too. You can't be just hanging around with strangers. So you kind of have to have your own friends around with you. So you're bringing all these people along with you. You need to make sure that they're having a good time as well and they're enjoying it. So, you know, picking places just based on how much they're paying you probably isn't the best way to go about things. So he wants to leave, obviously. Fair enough. Let him leave. But in the interim, let him play. Um, I've never really been a fan of this tactic of like, oh, if a player wants to leave, you just you know you, you leave them on the bench or you let them train with under 23s i get it if it's like a phil jones character or if it's like a player that you know has flattered to deceive a little bit fair enough but if a player has got an ability to maybe you know impact a game to maybe provide you know a magical moment that will help the team or it's just a simply a player who can command a higher fee if you play them. Unfortunately, fortunately or unfortunately, Marshall's got a good enough reputation where if he's able to have a good three or four months, for not three or four months, if he's been able to have a good month or so with Man United or maybe a few weeks, that will definitely increase his potential to go to a better team. So it's within our best interest to basically have him to play because it means we get more money in terms of the transfer fee or whatever. No, actually, you can't get transfer fee. Isn't his contract running out? Yeah, what am I talking about? Regardless, anyway, we'll just open these options up available that he wants to play for. But either way, happy he came on. Instantly when he came on, instant impact especially further forward on the pitch no surprise too that he played better because we're actually starting to play better football although it wasn't perfect you saw a little bit more of what you would might have seen in training with united it's been the first time where i've actually seen okay there's a, there's clearly a shape there's clearly patterns that we're attempting to do now whether or not we have the players to um we have the players to do the the patterns or to you know to play at that level especially on match days another thing but clearly these guys are being coached whether or not they can you know follow the instructions execute the instructions is a whole other topic but they're clearly being coached something that we can't say for you know Mourinho we can't say for early gun social for sure and definitely not towards the end of Mourinho's time it felt a little bit like they were just going out there and doing their own thing or they, they start with one plan and then if it didn't work they just kind of revert back to doing their own thing so that was great to see Marshall had an instant impact that kind of player that's able to move the ball quickly keep it simple um, you know dribble when he needs to be dribbled pass when he needs to pass was so refreshing to see especially if you consider when Rashford came on first he had he attempted one dribble and he immediately got tackled and then he switched flanks onto the other side when Martial came on and all of a sudden he got some joy because he was able to kind of come steaming in through the back post where no one basically saw him but Martial was a breath of fresh air I'm not going to lie so it was great to see him you'd like to see somebody like a Donny Van Beek get more of an opportunity too in that position or sorry for the people that are obviously sub bench to obviously get a position in that regard but you know the Donny van der Beek story is probably over with. He's not going to be a United player anytime soon, so he's probably going to let that one go. But apart from that, all good. United are now top four. Obviously, um, Tottenham have got a couple of games in hand, so that obviously puts things, or a couple, I think they maybe got a few games in hand, actually, um, for all the kind of cancellations. So that makes things a little bit more tricky. Chelsea are obviously going through a bit of a slump. I don't think they're going to drop out of the top three. I still think it's going to be Man City, Liverpool and Chelsea top three. I think everyone else is going to have to fight for the top four space. But luckily, because no one else, with the exception of Man City, has been playing really well in a league or in a consistent basis, it's basically afforded us the opportunity where we've drawn a lot of games, we've lost a couple of games here and there, and we're still within a shout to finish in the top four, which is crazy. We should be nowhere near. We should be, we should be done already by now, right? There should be more than two or three teams 
that are above us challenging we shouldn't be the one in the spot challenging so that just goes to show maybe the level of the league at the moment isn't the greatest when you kind of get out of the top three or maybe when you get out of the top two so maybe it's a four just a chance but hey i'm not crying about it i'm not complaining about it either so good to see hopefully we, the club can uh, the players can push on from that i don't think it's anything to shout home about this isn't a cup final it's just west ham at home we should be beating teams like this all the time every season yes it's a tricky game but in general for the players that we have available um you know we should be winning this type of game there's reason there really is no excuse especially when it's a season where it looks like we might end up trophyless if that is the case the minimum requirement is to finish in the top four you can't be having people like Varane, Sancho and Ronaldo in your team and finishing outside the top four and you know basically asking those very same players to go and play in the Europa League even though it's a team sport and no one deserves anything without the team members next to them it still would be a shame for players of that ilk to be in such a competition considering also again the league and considering how you know topsy-turvy it was back and forth but hey what do i know anyway we're going to jump into some topics stuff, stuff to talk about let's just move on so i've been thinking lately because obviously my spiritual home away from home berlin is basically off the books for a while it feels like i read an article recently that said berlin has turned into like some covid hotspot or something like it's going a bit crazy over there they're investigating certain party members for you know fraud i don't know it's going crazy over there things are not great as they should be and i can only imagine what people's mental health is like in a place like that where effectively there's no point of living in a city like berlin unless you've got the ability to party do you know what i mean it kind of renders that city null and mute or at least you've got the opportunity to basically gallivant around the city regardless of what you're doing even if you're not listening to techno music or you're just hanging around or you're doing your thing that city kind of requires you to gallivant around places meet random people and whatnot and when that's taken away from you it basically what's the point of being there so i can only imagine what those guys are going through so again if you're out there and you're hanging in just you know, if you're out there and you're suffering just hang in there if you can man hang in there um times will get better but because of that i'm now having to look at other places that i want to go to get my little um whole, what's your Ryanair techno fix and i was thinking about um, going to ukraine going to kiev um specifically because i've heard it's a great place to party um i follow this um instagram account that i used to ch and, sorry i haven't checked in a while but because i haven't been using instagram but what's the account called it's called like Soul 2 Vibes or something like that. I think it's called Soul 2 Vibes, right? Um, it's a really good Instagram account that basically follows or basically profiles and uploads video clips of loads of people in basically Kiev partying and having an absolute sick time. So it's really one of my favorite accounts to follow. And another one I think called Closer for the club Closer itself. So that's pretty cool. And also I remember a few years ago, there was this rumors or stories about this club over there in Kiev, unnamed club. I think it was a symbol or what, or whatever the... the um, or whatever the flipping the script or what is it no, what is it called when you write the style of it whatever the ukrainian language is for that club's name was basically that symbol but it wasn't called anything right in english or anything but it was supposedly designed by the same people who designed um the interior of berkheim um so there's loads of synergy there supposedly a lot of the people that play in places at berlin would go and play there regularly too so it was basically known as a bit of a hot spot that people went to and supposedly from what i read online too the sound system is absolutely incredible but of course me being who i am and looking the way that i do i was a little bit nervous about deciding to go to a place like ukraine because i remember when i went to prague once and kind of ventured a little bit outside of the main city ring the looks i was getting were really kind of worrying for the most part i know most of it was just probably people just like you know um curious why somebody looked like myself was this far out of town but still it kind of reminded because usually when i go around town unless i kind of have a really bad interaction with a police officer or some lady clutching her bag you kind of forget what, what color you are do you know i mean because you're just living your life you, i don't wake up every day and flipping you know do a flipping harlem shake or do you know what i mean or flipping um you know or whatever do you know what i mean that's not what i'm doing when i wake up at the time so for the, I, don't, I know some people might do they wake up in a harlem shake straight away whilst they got their do rag on and whatever but i don't do that i just try and live my life but when you go to these places you are reminded that you look nothing like them and you're not the same so it's not really the best this place to be you know on the holiday with your guard down trying to relax when you're you're not too sure if some flipping nazi's gonna run down the street and kick you in the head so i was a bit nervous about that but supposedly i've heard through a couple of people someone that i kind of dm'd actually on instagram a couple of years ago maybe a few months ago sorry who's um who seems like a little bit of a hipster scene boy from berlin who basically told me that no it's fine i'm a black kid i went there a few times and it's cool 
But again, it's hard to take someone's like that advice or recommendation because he's an incredibly cool person who has an incredibly cool job. So essentially, everyone wants to lick your ass anyway. Whereas I'm just a random tourist that's just going there to have a good time and party, do you know what I mean? And, f and kind of f uh, fist pump in the air and shit. So maybe it'll be different for me, but I'm hoping it won't because so far, anyway, I've not really seen any crazy reports that say it will be anything different, but I'm really looking forward to it. So I'm thinking of going there. Supposedly flights to go there are like, what, 30? No, sorry, F flights to go there, duration time is like three hours, which is, you know, something to get used to being on a Ryanair flight. If you know about Ryanair seats and stuff and how uncomfortable that plane is, it's all well and good going on that plane when you're going to Barcelona Madrid maybe parts even Scandinavia or something it's like two and a half hours it's all well and good but three hours in those seats it's like oh that's tough in it but hey um and then of course the flights themselves aren't that expensive I think there's like I think the max I saw it out was about 100 quid um return the only issue is that I think there were only like two flights that leave per day so it's not like those popular destinations where you've got like, you know, four or five in one day. I think the flights are basically one in the morning, one in the evening. That's just basically about it. So that's the comfort to get used to. The accommodation looks incredibly cheap compared to other places that I've been to. It kind of reminds me of the old school Berlin times when you could get your own basically apartment in the heart of the city or where the hipsters all are in like Neuklund for like 150 quid for like a weekend. Now you can't never get those prices. I mean, it's like 200, 300 pound plus. I saw the Airbnbs for the Kiev weekend, which would for me be arriving on a Friday and leaving on a Monday. It was already about 150. I was like, okay, this is definitely my place to be. I just don't know where location wise, I'll probably have to get it somewhere close to all the clubs are because again i don't know the city too well but i did have um this map on here that shows basically a google review of the actual um club itself and what people actually have said about it and what they liked and what they didn't like um I've actually been, they might have some pictures because i don't think there's any pictures actually on what you call it on google of it because obviously you can't take pictures inside when you're actually in the place but this is kind of a an outside look of what it kind of looks like so you've got this you know um you got this very uh, austere, stark building, you know, that I'm guessing that's been purposely left as is with all the improvements made inside, which I've always loved. I've always loved the idea of like rocking up to a place like this where it looks derelict and it looks abandoned, but then you open the doors and it's completely, you know, it's amazing inside. You know I mean, architect, interior design to detail, amazing furniture, great lighting, sound system is insane. So I've always liked that kind of thing. Supposedly it's also called this. It's also called whatever street name it is. Where have you pronounced that word? That's why it's also called. So it's not always called the sign, but that's what I've basically seen on there. And let's go back to see some of the reviews, what people have to say about it. Obviously, I've saved up my maps because I'm definitely uh, aiming to go. And let's see what some of these reviews say about this place. But it does look really interesting. And for the most part, from what I've seen in terms of listings, they have uh, just the same kind, not the same, but they do have quite a lot of kind of homegrown people playing too, which has been good, good to see. A lot of people that I don't really recognize names wise who are filling in the list and then they have a, a few, um, a couple of, you know, international acts here and there that kind of pop in. So that should be pretty cool. So someone says here 10 weeks ago, a better outdoor venue than any Berlin. Um, great lineup and people the main dance floor is a bit too dark in the winter a few of my friends fell because they couldn't see <laughs> would be nice to have a bit more light to see people dance and flirt after or also pumping in fresh air would be a bit different still a five star experience it's hard to say five stars when your friends drop on the floor so maybe some of them fainted or you know maybe twisted their ankles you couldn't see anyone hooking up so you didn't get that kind of you know um you didn't get some of that visual stimuli of people kind of flirting and having loads of adult fun and also there was no fresh air so what you were recycling in people's bo that's not really a five-star review but i like the optimism um it says here the site claims that there was no room for discrimination this is three weeks ago actually someone said guy in yeah 50 percent of the line had to turn back around the door because they weren't allowed to go inside no reason was given to anyone and the crew was smiling constantly while people had to turn back on new year's eve to go back home through the rain worst experience ever i don't like this sort of stuff i don't think again when it comes to certain places in general, in general, I'm not a fan of elitism. I'm not a fan of snobbery. I'm not a fan of gatekeeping. I'm not a fan of, you know, if you've not got, if you've basically got the means, you're not being allowed in a certain place because you don't have a certain look. But unfortunately, when it comes to nightlife and it comes to clubs, people, especially when it comes to going out at night, 
they tend to get a bit loopy drugs alcohol is involved people just let down the inhibitions and maybe sometimes the worst parts of some people's personalities come out and i think sometimes in these sort of clubs where they're not essentially catered towards the general public they're mostly catered to people who kind of get it right for the most part it's cringy to say but that's the, that's the case if you're gonna go to like a general club that's gonna invite or allow anybody in that's got money you know where to go but if you go into these places you're obviously going for the experience because it's a little bit higher brow than other places if that's the case i think they should be allowed to have higher brow entry requirements now some of the entry requirements may border on some discrimination sort of levels but again i don't think there's any way to stop that happening it could happen in a sandwich shop they could still give you the sandwich but they could treat you horribly you have no idea if the person woke up on the wrong side of the bed or they don't like the color of your skin you have no idea so kind of eliminating that doesn't really make sense and unfortunately also because of the popularity of these places they have no initiative or no incentive to change well no yeah no incentive to change actually um, because why would they like the, for, for 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 however many people complain at these doors and shout and scream i'm never going to come back there's a million other people who are ready to take their spot it's the same sort of thing that people would say about people who complain online about airlines it's like oh i'm never gonna fly with this airline again it's like okay cool we don't care do you know what i mean like basically because there's plenty of other people that will and that will put up with our nonsense so there's no incentive for these people to change so that's where it gets a little bit tricky in that regard and like i said before i generally do think as a business you should be allowed to basically determine who or what you allow in your flipping establishment um to a certain extent of course um i think that's how it always should be and in by and large you know if you really want to go i am um, again this is sad to say i think you if you really want to go you eventually will get in it's, you know no one wants to be taking constant trips to a certain location flying somewhere paying for accommodation in the hopes of getting in somewhere that's a bit nuts but you know kind of framing your entire trip on one place anyway is insane even when i go places like i always have places that i want to go and check out cool but i always have contingency plans just in case it doesn't work out i don't just put all my eggs in one basket that sounds insane but you know everyone's kind of different in that regard someone says here yeah, best lineup oh i actually like this ago two months ago best lineup the barman do an excellent job someone says here yeah, a month ago i have attended raves of all kinds since 21 so since 2001 my home is toronto canada never have i been um, arbitrarily denied entry to any venue was totally sober money in pocket smile on face told not today not sure i want to try again ask politely why no answer provided you should never ask why really that's like asking why when somebody breaks up with you you should just accept their decision and move on um it's embarrassing i'd imagine so i've been denied myself no i haven't really to be honest the only time i did get denied in the place is when i was with a massive group of boys so i should have really known better and then we actually tried to go around the corner and take off our jackets and try again like as if they wouldn't have recognized us i mean i already looked the way that i look but right? imagine me taking off my jacket imagine me coming to a door with one jacket on you telling me no and then me turn around the corner and take putting on my friend's jacket and coming back again you'd be like are you taking a piss like, oh. but obviously i was drunk and high as so i didn't really gather what was going on so that was the only time i've actually been denied and again i don't really put all my eggs in one basket i always have contingency plans or other places i want to go to just in case um and it's not that deep for me if i don't get in, i don't get in. I mean, it's just a club i don't care um and that person says here three weeks ago oh these are bad reviews three weeks ago it says i oh, claims to be a uh, territorium of freedom free of racial judgments but after standing in an hour for rain we weren't sent home without a reason after speaking to a citizen of kiev it turns out you shouldn't go there as a foreigner the whole freedom image they're playing or turn out to be as fake as it could be they're trying too hard to be burgoyne but again no one's really talking about they keep saying discrimination and not being judged or racial thing but no one's actually saying if they're black or not that's what people want to hear are you black are you asian like let me know like let be be clear or is this people from hungary saying i was discriminated against like mm, i don't know man i don't know if i buy that one you know what i mean that's what i, that's what I want to see i want to see a group of black kids just said oh we tried to get in here and they said no i don't see that so far another one from a month ago smaller than Burkine called an open audience together with an incredible level of facilities either for partying or even relaxation it's beautiful and crowdy booth at Saturday night and Sunday afternoon very strict door policy though so dress some kind of underground style and keep it positive in front of the entrance well it kind of reminds me of the old days so back in the day when places were a lot less popular as they were before 
it was very hard to get into certain places either you had to queue really long or when you got to the front someone would tell you no which made those places unfortunately that much more desirable because you were like okay cool next time i go i'm definitely getting in here that's basically the, the crux of the situation and if a really strict place exists i don't think that's a bad thing you could go to certain restaurants in japan or so in tokyo and you could not be served or you won't be let in just because of the cut of your jib or because of the time of day you went there or because they supposedly ran out of the produce but they just don't want to make it for you because they don't think you're worthy this things happen all the time and it, unfortunately this is one of the you know this is one of those kind of weird things that I'm kind of in two minds about because like I said, I think it, it must be super gutting to travel that far distance or whatever. It doesn't matter how far you travel. If you walk around the corner and to think, you know, because everything else in life, if you have the money and you're willing to travel or you're willing to do what needs to be done, you know, yeah, if you have the money, basically, or the means to, you can basically do whatever you want. So it must be a bit of a mind fuck to kind of go to a club and be told, nah, nah, your money's not good here, go away. And then you ask why and they don't tell you anything and they turn their backs to you or you know or they push you away or they call the police like that must be hard to take another person here said Bergan's little brother don't forget to go home um that's the name of a good documentary you should check out as well if you haven't checked out a really nice one about the scene and all that stuff another person says here yeah, excellent stuff amazing crowd will definitely come back to ukraine again for this place another person says here three weeks ago such an amazing crazy place another person says five months ago my friends and, and my friends and me come from berlin for pro okay for the conceptual party and we are all very positive surprised by the amazing club architecture other fun and friendly guests and the friendly and professional workers music was also very good we are all in Impress, and it's not easy to impress Berlin party veterans. We all we all want to come back. Thanks for the amazing experience. All right, mate, take your head out of your own ass. We can't impress Berlin party. Some of these people, man, like relax. You know what I mean, relax. You just go into a rave. Relax. Uh, best, one of the best. Oh yeah, I like this one. One of the best ones ever. Told you, Berger, and I was not expected to see what underground scene in Eastern Europe. The only difference I compare to Berger is the door staff is much friendly, and I'm happy with that. So one people, some group of people say the door staff are super rude and they're really strict. Other people say they're really friendly. But I guess it depends where you're coming from. If you're coming from a place where everyone's a dick, that's gonna be like it's gonna be like going to Disneyland. If you if you're used to people acting, you know, being overly nice to you at the door, you're also gonna be a bit surprised because people are gonna be a bit cold. I'd imagine so. And also just imagine what uh ukrainian persons are like day to day they're not they're not like us brits i mean happy go lucky saying sorry or thank you a million times like they've, they've got a completely different way of acting so it's probably a way to kind of get it's probably takes some time to get used to that so that's one place i want to check out and then the other place i want to check out is this place called arsenal what is it called um arsenal 23 or is it no arsenal 22 i don't know why it's called that to be honest to be really really honest i don't know why this random club in kiev is named after a football club in the uk but we move there are some pictures of it actually um which look pretty cool it kind of reminds me a little bit of um there was this dixon set from back in the day not back in the day, but a few years ago from boiler room where he's basically playing next to something that looks like this like a roman cathedral -y type you know churchy catholic thing and it looks really amazing it also looks like the lighting's been done by um what's his name james turnbull was it james turnbull that guy that Kanye is obsessed with it looks looks like it's been lit by him in it but the lighting's amazing in there in terms of looks wise so at least we've got some idea of what this place looks like on the inside but for the most part everything else you just basically have to attend which is quite nice it kind of reminds me of, again of old berlin because most of the places i went to you didn't really get any images of them unless you were crawling through people's facebook accounts and you happened to stumble upon something usually most of the places were just you know unless you're there you don't get any idea of what's going on and who's playing at these places so let's see some of the reviews for this place um arsenal it says yeah amazing place of vulnerable vibe finally you can feel free and safety thanks for all the stars you perform great work everyone who wants to see how the best club in ukraine looks like don't waste your time on other places attend arsenal 22 as soon as you possible and you'll feel it listen to it and fall in love so i guess compared to the other place this might be a place where you probably get in a lot easier than the other one, which is why these people are going overboard by saying, don't go to other places, go here. Because I imagine everyone probably gets turf from the other main spot. So that's quite nice to know because they're not too far away from each other either, if I'm not mistaken, right? Look at the map. They're not, they're not too, yeah, they're not too far. It's like kind of, that's, where is it? It's here. No, it's there, right? No, it's there. It's there and it's like one long road all the way down over there. So not too far um let's continue on the reviews yeah another person three weeks ago see look at the look at the and this is somebody that's verified that's left a few reviews so not some scrub 
and 132 reviews have actually left this person. They say the following about Arsenal 22. Avoid this place and be happy. There are awesome alternatives. You'll be much better served in clubs like Colida, um, K41, Closer, Hotel, HVLV, or bars like Graham. Oh, that's good to know all these bars and stuff. Um, Nesdo, Sloy Bar, B2B, and pretty much anywhere else. Enjoy the cater. <laughs> Ah, oh, people hate it. Thanks for the super, the super friendly team. No one says smoking allowed. Gross. Easy way to catch COVID or any virus where you're smoking in the country should be enforced. The law. I quite like it. I gotta be honest. I have to be one of those guys that says I quite like when I go to what's it? Paris was the same thing where everyone was smoking. Um, you go to Berlin, everyone's smoking indoors. I quite like it. It's annoying because once you come back home, your whole clothes stink. But it's quite nice to pretend you're a smoker too and buy a pack or something, and then you know violently cough after a couple of drags and then give the rest to somebody else it's quite thrilling um but it is quite nice i gotta be honest it kind of takes me back to a a much simpler time in life um continue here another person says a venue that's clearly trying to emulate Bergheim, which is a laughable tickets were about 30 dollars for two of us which is standard that's pretty good i think we get to the door and they say that if you're not 21 you can't get in <laughs> this is clearly not true due to the fact that the people who are clearly not 21 will also get in without id checked I love tech. Ah, that's see people when they leave reviews. Uh, this is why I don't like how people that leave reviews. It's kind of similar to Karen's. Whenever you see a video of a Karen online, they always start recording when they feel like they're gaining the upper hand, but they never show you what led to the person they're arguing with to snap. It never showed that. They always show either when they gain the upper hand, or when they feel like they, or when they, or when they feel like they're looking like a victim, so that you can get sympathy for them. And then when the full story comes out, you're like, oh, this guy's this guy or girl is a flipping psycho. The same here. This person's admitting loads of information because I thought what they were gonna say after they mentioned the ticket price was that oh, we bought tickets online, we got to the door, and they said, um, you know, it, it, tickets didn't guarantee entry. That's annoying. That's really because I know some places do that where they say where they put it in really small writing that tickets don't guarantee entry. But if you don't know, you don't check, you just pay your money and you buy the ticket and you work up and then they say, oh, we don't like what you look like, so you're not going to get in. And they don't even offer you a refund on the door. They tell you to email them later. And it's just like, come on, if you're going to turf me whilst I get there, at least have a little petty cash bag there ready to give me the money back to be like, okay, cool, sorry for the loss. Do you know what I mean? Um, but this is clearly a case of somebody not bringing their ID, thinking that they look over 21, being denied. Again, I don't understand people who go to foreign countries and don't bring ID when they go clubbing. It's like, what is wrong with you? Like, really, what is wrong with you? And Apple says, I love techno, always have, but just because I wasn't wearing clothes deemed suitable for techno rave on account of the fact that I was only in Kiev for three days, we were turned away. I doubt we'll get money back for our tickets. I would avoid if you would, if I were you. Again, going to another city in another part of the world for three days, not doing any research about what people that go there look like, not doing any research about how strict they are on the door and just kind of gambling is a risk before disaster. I'm sorry. These places are already insufferable already as it is. The scene's insufferable. You go to some record stores in some cities and you have these flipping, you know, dusty motherfuckers that, you know, are working for six pound an hour giving you dirty looks, right? Because you're not touching the records correctly. It's annoying and it kind of pisses me off. But that's the scene. It's pretentious. It's full of people that are up there in asses. But for the most part, if you kind of keep at it, they all warm up and they're usually lovely people. But if, they, if they're pretentious in crappy record stores, imagine how pretentious they're going to be if they're the ones that have the ultimate power to say yay or nay to your night out. Like, you have to do yourself a favor, really. Another person says, here, had a blast here. The place is up the street, has an insane queue. And we found this place by mistake. And that was a blessing. Okay, so they probably went to the main one. And then they went there. Music was a um, religion. Another person says, I did a working documentary of the situation. The customer threw. Oh, I don't know what that says here. Or the documentation. Okay, that's probably translated. I'm not going to get that one correctly. But yeah, so far, the reviews don't look too shabby. Very cool vibe. Blah, blah, blah. But yeah, that's the plan. Kiev to go. So if you um, have any information, my dear listeners, about Kiev and if you've been there before for a clubbing weekend, please let me know via the comments below. Or if you listen to the podcast, email me. I'll put the link to the actual. Actually, there'll be a, if you go to the main page of my podcast, there's actually a contact me button there at the top. There's a contact button. So you can actually click that. And then from there, you can obviously um, let me know what you guys think of uh, let me actually see if I can get up on here. The yeah, there you go. 
if what you actually think of Kiev as a city and whether or not you would recommend it for a place for me to go to. So if you actually check out my main uh, podcast page, which is com, which I obviously change it to the .com because that's horrible. But regardless, there's a contact me button there at the top. So if you listen to the audio, I'll put that in the show notes for you to check. Um, email me, let me know what you think of Kiev. Um, have you been there before? Would you recommend it? Would there other places that you think I should go to before visiting the main spots I kind of pointed out there? Let me know. Let me know. Um, next on the list, moving on. <laughs> what else we say here? We want to talk about. Oh, this is one to talk about. I'm surprised at this news. So this is courtesy of Reuters. And it says um, there's Peloton plans, workforce size review and production changes. I'm legitimately surprised that during, because I would have thought, because you know everyone during pandemic or lockdown had gained some level of weight or went through some level of depression or went through some tough times and usually people were finding all these strange little outlets to kind of um take their mind off things right whether it was people earlier on making sourdough bread or doing crochet people just getting these little hobbies and one of the things that kind of blew up in terms of popularity even though it's incredibly expensive was peloton people are buying these exercise bikes that have this um workout plans linked to them these really energetic sort of fitness um ex fitness experts and you know whatever kind of running you through particular courses some of the fitness experts this that went kind of viral for some of the clips that they put out but essentially it's a really cool like at home workout system and it gained a lot of popularity during the lockdown similar to what happened to like zoom right um or even let's say house party that app that kind of went kind of started and fizzled out all these apps that were basically harnessed by people during the pandemic or during the lockdowns um you would have thought would have just kind of carried on riding that wave especially once people kind of changed their overall lifestyle habits and maybe even though the world had reopened you still like to have a little bit of a sweat in the morning on your peloton bike but it doesn't seem to be the case so this is a uh, courtesy of reuters it says peloton plans work for size review production changes it says the following, uh, Peloton Interactive Inc.'s chief executive said on Thursday the company was reviewing the size of its workforce and resetting production levels following a report earlier in the day that it was temporarily halting production of connected fitness bikes and treadmills after a significant drop in demand. Shares in the exercise bike maker, once a pandemic darling, closed down to 24% at around, two, uh, around $24, wiping off nearly $2.5 billion in market value. Youch. We now need to reevaluate our organizational structure and size of our team said CEO John Foley we are still in the process of considering all options to make oops sorry to make uh to make our business more flexible according to CNBC report Peloton in confidential presentation dated on 10th of January said it had seen significant reduction in demand and they plan to pause bike production in February March and also um what manufacture tread uh tread uh, tread treadmill machine for six weeks beginning next month also they've got a treadmill machine too that's coming up um but yeah crazy isn't it right so bad that they have to actually change their production schedule and halt things going into manufacturing mad 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 rumors that we are halting all production of bikes or treads is false fully says so they're halting some uh peloton earlier said in the day uh, uh, peloton earlier in the day said it was taking significant corrective action to improve the profitability and estimate second quarter revenue to be about 1.14 billion compared to its previous forecast of 1.1 billion to 1.2 billion the company has seen a slump in demand for its fitness classes and equipment as people venture out to the houses to hit gyms again following gradual easing of relative curbs i don't think that's true again i've i go out i go to a gym where regular people go to and i've seen the ebbs and flows of people going and for the most part i've definitely seen a reduction in people going to the gyms in general it feels like people have basically accepted their new reality so whatever extra pounds they put on they've accepted it or for the most part i've heard people basically saying i would much rather diet correctly than go and work out because it's just easier to do and it doesn't require that much of a strenuous effort to go and put workout clothes on go and particular things sweat out come i mean you can you, if, if you're strict enough and you know what you're doing in terms of like kind of your macros and all that malarkey and you know calories in calories out you can effectively lose a bunch of weight it'll take you longer of course because you're not going to be doing a lot of exercise but if you want to just do it through a strict diet or through some sort of um new way of eating um you can basically do it so most people are doing that or accepting their new reality or if you were an avid gym person you maybe replaced it with other things that are bringing you a lot of um a lot of joy and i'd imagine people like myself even who used to wake up at 6 a.m i don't go at 6 a.m anymore jimmy sometimes i just aim to go before 12 and sometimes even i'll go after that so 
I'd imagine there's a whole group of people who maybe have looked themselves in the mirror during the pandemic and be like, actually, me kind of obsessing about what my traps look like and all that malarkey isn't really giving me what it used to give me, especially considering everything that's gone on. I'd much rather do my, I'd much rather be spending my time with my family, with my kids, with my partner, whatever it may be, right? People have basically changed or kind of diverted their priorities to other things. So I think that maybe has more to say, but I don't think all of a sudden everyone that was doing Peloton at home has gone out and bought themselves a track bike or a road bike and then decided to go do outdoors. I don't think so. If you're the kind of person that wants to have a Peloton in your house in the first place, I think the, I would say, I would guess the percentage of people who buy Pelotons and then go buy a bike to go ride outside is pretty low. I think if you're buying a Peloton, you're buying it because you don't have time to go outdoors and cycle around your area. You're doing it because you like the convenience of being able to go down into your garage or, or pull it out of your into your living room and just cycle at home. I would imagine that would be the case, but you know, I could be correct. I could be incorrect there. The company that there says here, during the pandemic, there was little to no supply to meet growing demand. Unfortunately, the company took these cues um, to bulk the supply chain as uh, demand began to falter. Peloton has been working with consulting firm McKinsey and Co. A review to cost of, to review the cost of structure could cut jobs. CNBC reported earlier this week. You probably thought you had a job for life if you went there, innit? And now all of a sudden the job's gone, man. It's like the the one good thing about the pandemic, again, another good thing, another unintended consequences, has been everyone's sort of collective awakening at the perilous nature of employment. I think we all kind of knew anyway deep down that jobs don't last forever, but I think the stark reality of like how dispensable we all are in our position unless you're again you're a high level um operative in whatever workforce that you work in and even then your job's at risk it really kind of opened our eyes to basically saying you know what i'm giving these people all everything i have especially some of my friends who are like extremely hard working right to the, to a fault where they're, they're staying extra hours they're doing all these stuff they're not getting any comp any guarantees that they're going to get promotions all this nonsense um it probably was the greatest wake-up call they've all basically needed to be like okay i don't need to be investing as much as i was previously because i'm not getting much out of it and also maybe there's more to life than sweating and beating myself up over stuff that i don't own in at all do you know what I mean it doesn't make sense it really doesn't make sense but you know we all have to kind of go through these things before we kind of realize them so did I say that right before we realize them realize them I kind of tried to skip over that mispronunciation but you know I'm an honest man then we want to move on here I think this is a some due props needs to be given to Mr. Sean Witherspoon because it feels like he's been getting a little bit of a bashing on you know sneaker social media because um after his kind of barnstorming uh collaboration with nike for the what was it uh blah, 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 for the for the nike mx ones the 97s right yeah the 97s are the ones that were i still think you know they'd go down in history as one of the greatest sort of sneaker collaboration designs in the history of sneakers he did a really great job with these right absolutely smashed them um then we got this sample pair that never ended up coming out unfortunately um, and I think there was another one too, yeah, that Paisley one. What else was there that you could tear away? You know, I think that's the same one, actually. I want to talk about um, That's the same one. There was something else as well that was, we saw that was a sample. Uh, let me see if I can get up on it. There was another sample too that didn't end up coming out. Yeah, that's the one. This is the one as well that didn't end up coming out too, I'm pretty sure. So we had all these stuff come in, and obviously, clearly, he was enjoying his time at Nike posting stuff like this work 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 like just clearly living the dream right for all sneaker heads out there he kind of was living we we're living by Casey for him especially considering how popular his um round two vintage shop was and him personally on social media but whatever happened between sean and nike happened he got dropped like a hot potato and then he had to slam it over at adidas and the collaborations over there weren't the greatest right they kind of looked a bit dead compared to the stuff that obviously he did at nike and one of the most striking ones was obviously this superstar right and this superstar and this super and the same one so and this superstar, right? but just to, like from going from that 97 that he did to that it's just it's always going to end and especially this ZX as well oh my god so they were really really bad compared to what he did previously now of course the one thing I'd give this guy credit for most more so than others he at least tries to approach his sneaker collaborations with some sort of freshness he comes at it with a different sort of perspective and he has a very discernible point of view when it comes to what he kind of likes in terms of design like you could spot 
the same with that Salili Bembry guy after he did the Crocs. I'm sure you could spot a Salili Bembry collab from a mile away regardless of what the brand is. You'll be able to spot it because he has a particular aesthetic, a particular code or particular codes that he used when he's designing. Same way it goes with Sean Weatherspoon. He does really well in that regard. But um, there's one thing of being, you know, uh, taking risks and maybe trying to push the envelope some bit. And there's also just straight up designing ugly shoes that no one wants to wear. And unfortunately, the proof was in the pudding and the customer spoke. And I, I saw these on sale in more places than I've ever seen any collaboration ever in the history of man. The only other collaboration I've seen on sale to this extent have been like the, what's it? Is it the, un, um, what the ambush dunks? Are they ambush dunks? Those are the only things I've seen on sale like crazy and crazy amounts. Is it ambush, Nike ambush dunk? Is that the one I'm talking about? The one that looks like kind of bat wings? Is it ambush? Also, I said the album, Nike ambush dunk. Is that the one I'm talking about? Yeah, it is this. Yeah, I've seen this on sale plenty of places, right? Variations of this ambush dunk, which kind of have these exaggerated proportions, has this weird little kind of mud guard back hill thing. The swoosh kind of pops out. I don't know. You know what I mean, I think whatever. They don't look that impressive to me. But these were the ones I saw on sale every flipping way. And unfortunately for Sean, they just didn't hit us the, uh, right. Then you got these trail ones that are meant to be for hiking, I'm assuming. If you live what in or in I don't know what sort of hikes you're meant to take these shoes on. Maybe if you live somewhere in LA, I think the the best color obviously was these, and this is the what uh, Sean Weatherspoon Atmos Adidas Super Turf Adventure GWA eight one zero. Yo, New Balance no New Balance um, Sukoni adidas you need to look at how you name your shoes man because the names are too long they're just simply too long you don't need all the super turf adventure gwa 10 like enough you could just call them the super turf eights or the super turf adventure gw8 so whatever just shorten it a little bit take away the adventure super turf adventure whatever it's too much too many words too many fucking words but again the, these shoes were all terrible um you know god bless him but he has come back with an absolute barnstormer. We have to give this guy credit. With the same aesthetic still with this sort of flowers, with the tearaway thing. I'm sure there's something to do with it. But regardless, in terms of just plain aesthetic and look, without him giving me a one sheet of why they look this way, these look great. Like, I have to admit, these look really, really nice. And it's no surprise, too. It's an EQT, one of my favorite models. And from Adidas, I think I've got... I had a couple, but unfortunately, you know, I bought them in a... I just, I, I did that wrong thing where I kind of tried to use the same sizings that I used for Nike and Adidas. And obviously, they ended up being way too small, even without the insole. But I think these Sean Weatherspoons, Adidas, EQT Support 93, Super Earth, again, the names are too long, um, is another really good one to add to a list of Sean Weatherspoons collaborations. Of course, he's wearing a Noah hoodie. And of course, he's standing, out, uh, you know, in front of a flipping peloton. Of course. Um, but regardless, the shoes do look good. Um, maybe this is his redemption arc. I'm glad to see him doing um, well in that regard because I still think he's incredibly talented. I still think he's got an incredibly eye, good eye. I still think his taste and his perspective or his outlook or his kind of, you know, the way he kind of approaches um, sneakers is really needed, especially considering how boring everyone else's collaborations are or how reductive and how samey they are. I think it's nice to have somebody that's out there pushing the envelope, regardless of what, you know, funny people say online. He's at least pushing the envelope. And again, if you're a fan of his, you're going to back this sort of stuff. So it's also a good thing because he's not trying to play it safe. He's just trying to appeal to the people that like the kind of stuff that he's into or like the stuff that he makes. And that's about it. I really, really do appreciate that. So um no date no idea oh, no there is a date here no no there isn't a date there's no date so there's lots of text loads of fluff no date we don't know when they're going to come out but these sean weatherspoons um sean web wotherspoon wotherspoon they say his name wotherspoon right adidas eqt support 93 is super earth look really good the name is too long but you know it is what it is next on here we've got this courtesy of sneeze no courtesy of sneaker news um a collaborative chuckers I think I mentioned on the podcast recently that I was surprised or didn't understand why more brands weren't doing Vans collabs with Chuckers or collaborating Vans and then doing the Chucker boot. For me personally, one of my favorite models in the Vans lineup, maybe I would say I'd go in terms of top three Vans models. I would say Vans Chucker. I would say Vans Old School. And then I would say Half Cab. In terms of classics, of course, you've got other models that, you know, that could be included in that skate high slip-ons, eras, authentics. But I think in terms of what I would wear in terms of my wardrobe, definitely chuckers, um, definitely uh, old schools and definitely um, 
what you call it, half cabs. And it's easy to say also, I'd probably take 90% of the collaborations. Like if you gave me a collaboration of every, you know, every collab in history with those models, I'd probably take 90% of those, maybe even higher. Because usually if you collab on those models, you usually bring the pain. You usually bring the pain. I've rarely seen an old school, a half cab or a chucker collab done really badly. It's impossible to do. Impossible. But yeah, these look amazing. I've always liked when they do chucker collabs and they take away the foxing stripe here on the top because I feel like it kind of discerns or kind of, you know, it kind of separates these from like regular Vans chuckers that you might find in sides or whatever because usually those kind of chuckers always have the foxing line at the top of the midsole there so that's always nice sometimes the soles are a different color maybe an off-white different sort of padding obviously the color options and how they apply they're incredibly nice and just the simplicity of it is always cool and then of course you've got the little detailing in the back heel tab where usually they have if if you want you can maybe have it a different color or you can maybe change the text to basically reflect the collaboration itself but considering also sneeze is one of the premier sort of um bougie skateboarding magazines something that i've collected for a very long time i actually I, I actually tried in vain to get myself a copy of the one that they did with virgil before I even passed actually and it was already hard to get and now it's basically impossible to get unless you want to pay resale prices so um yeah that's a shame but still one of my favorite um, skateboarding magazines or newspapers or broadsheets whatever you want to call it um they always kind of i like how they approach print with such dedication and such kind of um reverence even though everyone's basically online they still pay as much attention or as much effort into making a really beautiful magazine as some people do with the instagram feed so it's cool to see them have this collaboration it's cool to see um you know what they basically put out and says the advanced yeah the, the a free pair skate to celebrate the curve what's it to celebrate what what is celebrating collaboration releasing 21st of january okay it's not celebrating anything it says yeah sorry let me just read this before i make up my mind just reading the headline it says although vans hasn't loosened its grip around expensive inline collections the anaheim californian shooter oh come on mate it's not starring the vanscape chucker um the both parties keep things simple outfitting the top mid the mid top silhouette with a no fuss white brown and lime yellow uh continue to head with the product shots of the season magazine band skateboard collection here below um they're going to be available at dime store on jan 21st they're going to be available online anywhere also exclusively via the publication being so exclusive via the publication and moncho dime store so you can get them ev either on sneeze magazine site directly or via the dime store that's what they're saying here really is that true let's see if that's true sneeze vans chucker let's see if that's true Let's see if they're actually selling these nice kicks where, where can you buy them you can't buy them anywhere doesn't look like it where can you buy them i don't see them available to purchase anywhere that is a lie how can you purchase them see always happens this way isn't it they they bloody honey dicky they show you these amazing colors of shoes and then we try and get them they're like eh, no thank you no 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 mess uh no none for you actually no no mess let's go back here let's see if they got other one Let's see if they've got other pictures actually to check out. Um, I think there's a picture of somebody actually skating in them. But yeah, I'd obviously go for the limes or maybe the browns. I'm not, you know, I'd rather, yeah. Or maybe the blacks, whatever. What, what, what colorway is that actually? Yeah, browns. Yeah, I'd rather go for the limes or the browns. They look really nice. But yeah, they're cool as hell, in it? They just turned the label, I guess, on them. Oh, the poor tab has got Sneaks Magazine written on it, though. That's pretty cool. I like that. And then they've got this sort of checkered bog. Checkered board sort of um black and white tag there on the side of the of the collar there at the top the, yeah the limes look really nice the limes look nice that's a great picture of the limes i'm not mad at that little fish island shot there very 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 nice meant to be coming out when on the 21st it says uh yeah but you know i don't see them but hey what do i know what do i know and then we gotta move on to what else i went to talk about here that i thought was interesting to speak about oh yeah there's this news we still haven't got any information as to what jay lorenzo from fear of god plans to do at adidas obviously it was a really um bit of a shock news and that when it did drop that he was signing an exclusive partnership with adidas and it was even more shocking that it was an exclusive partnership that was under the basket adidas basketball sort of moniker and not him doing a lifestyle project that basically mirrored the stuff he was doing with nike it seemed like a complete departure whether or not that means it kind of allows him the license to maybe double dip and go back to nike before back no to go back to go does that make sense yeah maybe that, that he did that let me start that again because i got myself confused Maybe he purposely decided to take the job at Adidas and 
kind of request that they kind of give him free reign to do what he needs to do on the basketball side of things because it might separate what he did with Nike in terms of it leaves the door open or slightly ajar for him to go back there later on in the future and do something and it not be confused with like the fear of God stuff he did with Nike because it's a completely different sort of thing. Or maybe it was a long play and he knew that maybe if he goes there, he could maybe end up working with Kanye, somebody he has obviously worked with previously. I'm not too sure, but it's just an interesting move regardless um, because usually you feel like a lot of these guys they tend to have an affinity to Nike, more so Adidas. You don't really hear a lot of them running or trying their best to get in the good graces of Adidas and you know work things out that way. They're usually always pining for that Nike collab as much as possible. So much so in the past, I remember guys even you know deciding to flip and do a collab version of a of an Umbro shoe or some Converse just so they can get their foot in the door. So it doesn't really feel. So when I saw somebody of somebody's somebody of like Jerry Lorenzo's prominence decide on his own regard on his own accord so he had to go to Adidas it was a big big deal and we still haven't seen anything which shows you that there's far more leaks from the Nike side of things that Adidas in terms of early samples or what's going on we've not seen jack shit well I haven't anyway in terms of pro especially in terms of footwear because that's what people are really waiting for the clothing is one thing but the footwear we're really trying to see okay what are you what is he going to do this time around because I really thought those Nikes that he did were really good again not my aesthetic and nothing I obviously wear it doesn't really match my personal style but objectively looking at them they're beautiful like beautiful and incredibly original in terms of their shape in terms of their silhouette the paneling, the colours, the colourways are really good, were really, really well done. That also needs to be said because that's something that definitely overlooked when you kind of bring in a new model to a brand like Nike. You, I, it, you could be excused for going a little bit crazy on the, you know, on the colour matching and whatnot, but he kept it fairly simple and I love that. So this is Coach of Hypebeat. says, Fear of God Athletics previews collaborative Adidas products in new Intercept exhibition. So obviously went over to China to go do this as year right before 2020 concluded. Jay Lorenzo announced that he was going to discontinue his short-lived relationship with Nike and take his talent to Adidas. Um, the Fear of God founder has plans to completely revamp the Free Stripes basketball global creative and business strategies and release collaborative products under a new Fear of God Athletics division. Lorenzo has already teased a hoodie while he spotted out on court side of the Lakers game, but he has officially previewed more pieces in the newest intersect exhibition in Shanghai. Um, the immersive space is designed with stunning surround screens that are constantly playing sports related footage such as aerial view of basketball courts, boxing rings, soccer field and running track while commentator bits tied to the free stripe signees such as Damian Lillard and Billie Jean King blur in the background. Displayed inside a case on the back wall of one of the installations is a trifecta of, of a cold war. Sorry of a cold war fear of god athletics and are there's garments a crew neck sweater a mock neck and a pullover hoodie hang gracefully inside a glass display all of which are done in a pale yellow hue and come emblazoned with the bold blue a that's fear of god spell out across the front do we have pictures of them yeah i think we do here so all you see is hoodies hoodies and a little bench for you to come and watch the flipping um screens rotate this footage found footage that they basically cropped together from flipping youtube come on man show us the shoes um the entire exhibition is designed to promote the modernism of fear of god with rich history it's open until 23rd lorenzo confirms that the full collection is slated to arrive later i wonder if this is because of supply chain issues with covid that's why they've basically had to delay this because it's taken a while for us to see anything in it of no it's just like we don't see anything we've basically seen whatever they've been willing to chuck to us any sort of scraps but in terms of what actual footwear is going to be available we've not seen diddly squat let me quickly go on his profile see if he's got anything on there that he might have uploaded recently i don't think so because i've not seen anything on my timeline um but yeah nothing so far nothing just him looking cool and all his garments what's this i don't know oh yeah because i've not logged in i don't know what's going on there Stuff is going on here that he's looking pensive about. So yeah, let's see, man. Let's see. So far, we don't have a clue um, what he does have and what he doesn't have. But hopefully, um, we'll get an idea of that because I'm really curious to see what he ends up designing there for Adidas. Because I thought that Nike collab shoe was absolutely banging. I'm not going to lie, man. I'm not going to lie. 
Next on the list, we talk about this. This is courtesy of Hypebeats. I think a couple of people mentioned that I should speak about this, so I thought I would lend my little 2p, my little 10 cents for whatever it's worth. This is courtesy of Hypebeats, and it's the following. Vanda Supreme Parent Company, VF Corp, will also fire unvaccinated employees. Funny, isn't it, right? This rebellious brand um, built on the, off the back of skateboarding, built off the back of like you know kids expressing themselves in whatever which possible being unconventional in their lifestyle choices and in what they do in what they wear um live free like live live free die young all this sort of ball are now deciding to fire people man like vf corp man like oh yeah, yeah. anyway continue um according to reports van supreme and timberland and the north face camp company parent company vf corp will also fire unvaccinated employees the news comes after the word of nike reportedly firing some unvaccinated corporate employees this weekend vf corp employees were notified via email that soon as june january 31st 2022 unvaccinated persons will be terminated without severance that is absolute bullshit absolute bullshit it really really is especially if it's something that hasn't been worked into your contract prior to starting there where they had a stipulation that you know um if some act of god happened or whatever they could have the reins to basically fire you that's really 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 bad and i think in general especially when you think about us being able to have especially if you work in these kind of companies right you probably do have the opportunity to more likely than not most of your work gets conducted or is done via a laptop or some sort of computer so you do have the option if you're not vaccinated to just work from home permanently right um obviously it might impact your ability to maybe you know get a promotion or to socialize with people that you work with or whatever whatever kind of negative come with just being at home that's going to happen to you and i'd be willing people i'd be i'd, I'd assume people would be willing to take that risk or to be able to or they'd be open to that to be one of the consequences of them working from home but telling people that they can work from home but then also telling them that they must get vaccinated if they want to come and work in the office, even though you're letting them work from home, is ridiculous. I don't want to say it's close to discrimination, I just say it's ridiculous. It really, really is ridiculous. Like we're suddenly now changing um, our our kind of employment criteria um, based on this new phenomenon that's basically come about with the pandemic. And we're changing everything that we do about it. And we're essentially, you know, severely damaging people's abilities to basically keep the lights on and feed their family, which I think isn't something that you should be willy nilly kind of threatening people with. I don't think that's just, maybe there's a con, there's a, some middle ground that could be reached where maybe, you know for the unvaccinated folk there's a place that they can go to in terms of working or if they if they need to have like hands-on meetings or whatnot yeah or whatever there's something that could be worked out but in general especially if you can work from home an employer telling you that hey you can work from home but if you do want to come in on the rare occasion you have to get vaccinated actually scrap that you have to get vaccinated even though we're not going to require you to be in the office you know more than a week per year that's insane really really is insane unless of course these companies are the ones that are like no there is no such thing as work from home you're all going to work in the office i don't think that's the case i think most companies are allowing the employee even the most strictest of companies are allowing people to work from home if you obviously use a laptop and a computer it continues here it says it is important to note that back in october an internal email warned that beginning january the 1st 2022 all office-based u.s employees would need to be vaccinated against covid19 unless an approved medical exemption was secured by january 1st 21st 2022 they would be terminated without severance the terminated without severance is the brutal bit even if you again let's let's give them any sort of slack let's just say it's your place it's your business you can decide who works and who doesn't okay no problem so you decide now based on the information you have available that you know you don't want unvaccinated people in your office cool you fire them but fire them without severance because they decide to not get a vaccine that's um that basically isn't mandatory it's not like um it's not something that you have to get it's something that people are encouraging you to get but it's not something you have to get in order to basically be um a valid citizen do you know what i mean that's not obviously the world that we live in at the moment so i think that's really heinous i really really do think so that's really heinous and really unnecessarily cruel you're already terminating people um you know employment because they're not getting a vaccine the last thing you should be doing is eliminating any possibility for them to get any kind of cushion that can support them in between the time that they're looking for a job i think that's disgusting in my opinion it says the employees left their van shoes and handwritten notes showing their thoughts on the matter in the courtyard of the office complex associates who are unable to receive vaccine due to medical reasons sincerely hold religious belief or other exemptions provided by the state or local can request an accommodation or an exemption wrote vf senior director of corporate affairs colin wheeler that colin wheeler sounds like he talks the most shit 
anyone that's got that sort of title and puts it in their signature or throws around their business card they're definitely someone that everyone hates so imagine receiving an email of him telling you that you know you basically banged to rights and you've got an hour to clear your locker or something you'd be so pissed um it says if an associate does not have proof duh, duh, duh. Uh, look at the how this this is awful. Look at this. Let's look at the hear this paragraph. If an associate does not have proof of an accommodation um, by January first, they will be prevented from accessing our facilities <laughs> and will be required to work from home. Or they consult their manager on next steps. If by January thirty first they have not received or approved accommodation, they will be separated from the company and will not receive severance. Separated. So the word separation is used is that used twice or is that used once there they're prevented from access as well and required to work from home bloody you're separated you know i love that new kind of business office speak where it's, it's like do you remember before when it before, instead of saying fire they would say let go what's the other thing that they used to say um uh moved on some i don't know there's, there's all these terms that they use just to not say you got fired and now in terms of saying that they're basically firing you not to say it, they say separated now bloody hell the requirement currently only affects vf corp office space u.s employees but the next phase in spring will also apply to other u.s associates it's currently unclear if retail employees will also be affected of course they will um the supreme court already ruled the split decision regarding the change of the mate no nothing good has come out of that vf corp um acquisition or investment into supreme other than their new retail locations especially in places you know that aren't the main sort of like cultural streetwear hubs like places in italy and whatnot but for the most part nothing good has come out of that collaboration nothing as good has come out of that investment nothing even in terms of the products i'm a fucking massive supreme fanboy you won't find a bigger one than me like I said, I fanboyed out when I met James Jebbia, you know, more than a decade ago. I've got stuff in my collection from like 97. I bought many magazines for featuring Supreme stuff. I've got zines all over the guys, Wazoo. You know, I was a bit of an Aaron Bondera fanboy because of his connection with Supreme. Like I'm, I'm a fan Supreme, number one. And I always, I'm the kind of guy that can find something or find a few items for every collection that I'll be crying and wanking over in my room um because it's all sold out and it's available for triple the price on StockX. so i'm always going to say good things about them but let's not deny vf corp's investment into supreme has been basically the signal of the end if the end was the louis vuitton collab or maybe some other things were happening in between that people would thought okay this is the end this kind of marks the shift you know maybe some could even say when brendan babjan left to set up noah or to kind of restart noah again that was maybe signal the end of um, Supreme because he was basically one of the better designers there. And if you look at the, the stuff that he puts out for Noah, especially some of the outerwear, and look at the stuff that they do at Supreme, especially the excessive... Now, this has definitely been a shift. It's maybe from like 2015 or 2017 onwards, maybe 2014 even before that, where most of the coats that I have that were prior to those years had like little pull tabs or little labels off the side of the pocket that said Supreme on it. And that was about it. Or maybe the badge said something on it. But now nowadays you'd have the hood where the seamers have it you'd have a logo on the side in contrast white screen printed on there loads of big branded stuff that just kind of screams you know cheap and tasteless and um, kind of shouting in your face and again it's not cheap and you know for sure you, you know there's baseball caps for supreme i saw 50 dollars for fuck's sake but that was definitely a shift that i saw okay maybe this thing is going is basically going to end soon but credit to them also they have the ability to somehow always kind of reinvent themselves every season. So even when you think it's over, it's never really over. So that's something they've always always done that's pretty well. But I think stuff like this, and of course the, you know, people just maybe not being as keen on the products as they were previously in the past is definitely going to rub people up the wrong way and again i just think it's grossly unfair to be like hey it's one thing to say to people you're not going to work here because you're not vaccinated it's gross and it's disgusting and i hate it but then to then tell them they're not going to get any severance um for a decision that they are allowed to take even though you don't agree with it it's not something that they sort of like you know um you know if you don't do this you basically don't get a chance to live sort of thing I just think it's heinous. I really do think it's heinous and it's way, way, way over the top and unnecessary. But, you know, it's way outside my pay grade. I don't know. Maybe it's a bit different if you have a, a, an actual business that you run yourself. It maybe can get a little bit difficult in terms of understanding what's the right way to go about things in it. But um, what can you do? What can you do?
Oh, uh, what time is it now already? Is it late? I think it might be in it. Yes, one hour. Oof, one hour already. So yeah, maybe it's one hour already. I'm gonna watch the UFC. So if you aren't watching it already, no, actually, if you're not gonna watch this already, you would. You would have probably seen the results by the time you hear this anyway. But regardless, I'm gonna be tuning into the UFC now. So I'm going to leave you for now. Thanks so much for tuning in as per usual. It's been a pleasure to hear you and to feel you, especially via the stream. If it's your first time checking out the show, you know what to do. Smash like it, subscribe, leave a comment down below. And if you're listening via the podcast app, of course, a review would be much appreciated. Patreon link is obviously in the description. If you want to click that and get involved in the bonus episodes, that'd be greatly appreciated too. And if you're listening via the podcast app, you hear a song as per usual. If you're watching via YouTube, you won't hear anything. It'll just stop out of nowhere. And I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Take care. Be safe. Peace.